Welcome to Radiology Case Review, Ultrasound of Thyroglossal Duct Cyst. I'm Dr. Dan Koval from Radiologist Headquarters. This episode is brought to you by Samsung Ultrasound. The beautiful images that you're about to see were obtained on a Samsung RS85 Prestige Ultrasound Unit. I'm going to show you two unique cases of thyroglossal duct cyst in pediatric patients between the ages of 8 and 12, and I'll also highlight relevant neck anatomy. All right, let's start with case one. This was a pediatric patient that presented with an infected midline neck mass. Here we're looking at the superficial soft tissues of the anterior neck. This is a transverse view, and you can see there's a heterogeneously hypocoaxistic mass here with some internal debris and postacoustic enhancement. It measures at least one centimeter in transverse dimension. But when we look at the transverse cine clip, you can see as we're moving superior to inferior, it's actually much larger than that. And it is quite complex, multilobular. Here's the hyoid bone. And as we move inferiorly, there's the thyroid cartilage. So it's overlying the hyoid and thyroid cartilage region. There's also increased echogenicity of the surrounding fat on this transverse view with some mild vascularity, which is compatible with inflammatory change. Here again is that curvilinear echogenic hyoid bone. And we also see some mild internal vascularity at this septation. When we look sagittally, you can see better that we do have multiloculation, some septations, and heterogeneity. So this is a complicated thyroglossal duct cyst. This is the hyoid bone on the sagittal view, and we're looking at the thyroid cartilage in this region. And it's also important to document where this cystic mass is relative to the thyroid gland. This is a larger view sagittal image showing the thyroid gland inferiorly here, and over two centimeters superior, we have the multilocular cystic mass representing the thyroglossal duct cyst. Again, there's that hyoid bone. And let's look at the anatomy a little more closely here. So this is a transverse view. I'm going to move superior to inferior. Here we're at the floor of the mouth region. This is the mylohyoid muscle this muscle that looks like a hammock, and then these are the genioglossus muscles. This is one of the anterior digastric muscles here. And this is the submental region, the subcutaneous tissues under the chin. And then as I move inferiorly, now we're getting into that multilocular spiroglossal duct cyst. You can see that it's slightly off midline, and this echogenic curvilinear structure is the hyoid bone. As we go more inferior, now we're getting into the thyroid cartilage, and you can see this has more of a sharp angular margin, and these hypoechoic structures are the overlying infrahyoid strap muscles. Deep to this, which is partially obscured by shadowing, is the region of the true and false vocal cords. And as we move more inferior, now we're getting into the cricoid cartilage. And finally, we're at the level of the trachea, and here's the normal thyroid gland. So now I'm just going to move superior to review that. So now we're getting back into the cricoid cartilage region there. More superiorly, now we're getting back into that thyroid cartilage with these angular margins and the overlying strap musculature. More superiorly, now we're starting to see the cystic mass to the right of midline, and we're seeing it closely abutting the hyoid bone, this curvilinear echogenic structure. And then finally, superiorly, we're back at the floor of the mouth with the mylohyoid muscle. Notice we don't see the cystic mass at this level. Now, it's also important to document where the structure is relative to the salivary glands. Again, here's the echogenic hyoid bone, and at the same level, the submandibular glands occur. There's the right submandibular gland, and here's the thyroglossal duct cyst. Notice that it's separate from that. And the same on this left transverse view, there's the left submandibular gland with the thyroglossal duct cyst here. Notice that there's separation. All right, let's look at key points for case one. You can also find these in the episode show notes. So thyroglossal duct cysts are the most common congenital neck cyst. Most of these present before the age of 18. There's quite a range in the literature. One study showed that patients presented from age 2 to 50, but the vast majority of these will be in pediatric patients at time of presentation. Classically, they'll present as a midline fluctuant neck mass near the hyoid bone, typically asymptomatic unless they become super infected, and patients may then present with abscess. Sometimes they can also have a draining sinus. And these are epithelial line cysts caused by failure of the normal involution of the thyroglossal duct. And because that duct extends from the foramen cecum to the thyroid gland, these cysts can occur anywhere along that tract. Most, though, are infrahyoid, below the hyoid bone, and then the rest occur either at the hyoid bone or above it. And often, as in this case, there'll be some overlap as far as where the location is. Most will be midline as well, but they're often at least slightly perimedian, off midline. And the more infrahyoid it is, the more inferior the cyst is, the more likely it is to be perimedian. And it's important for both clinical and surgical planning to identify presence of normal thyroid gland on these studies. All right, let's move on to case two. This was another pediatric patient presenting with an infected midline neck mass. 
So here we're looking at the transverse view of the midline soft tissues. Here's the ultrasound gel here with the transducer at this level. And we have the cystic mass right at midline. And we're in the region of the thyroid cartilage with the overlying strap musculature. And you can see that part of this is embedded within the strap musculature. Notice also this some heterogeneous debris within the dependent aspect of this cystic structure, which has some vascularity that we can see here as well. Now let's look at a transverse cine clip of this structure. You can see that part of it extends posteriorly into the infrahyoid strap musculature. So it's partially embedded in that strap musculature. You can see that here on this image. And again, there's that angular thyroid cartilage. Notice as I move in fairly. So deep to that would be the true and false vocal cord regions. So this is the strap musculature, and then the overlying thyroglossal ductus is right here. Now we're looking at a sagittal view showing the ovoid thyroglossal ductus, and it does have some heterogeneous debris in it. But when we add color Doppler, we don't see much flow in that area. We do see some mild peripheral flow indicating inflammatory change. Now this is a sagittal cine clip, and what dynamic maneuver are we asking the patient to do here? Why is this cystic mass moving superiorly? But well, we're having the patient stick their tongue out and these classically will move superiorly following the movement of the tongue because remember these occur along the thyroglossal duct which goes from the foramen cecum of the tongue to the thyroid gland. There's the underlying hyoid bone and then the thyroid cartilage with the overlying strap musculature that this is partially embedded in. All right, the final key points for this case. So if the thyroglossal ductus is below the hyoid bone, it's typically embedded in these infrahyoid strap muscles that cover the thyroid cartilage. That's fairly specific. And these cysts may move with swallowing and will classically elevate with tongue protrusion as in this case. And this is something you might even see clinically if you can see the midline mass just on visual inspection, it often rises superiorly if the patient sticks their tongue out. When these are simple, thyroglossal duct cysts will usually appear as an anechoic midline neck mass near the hyoid bone. But if you see cyst complexity, that raises suspicion for superinfection. And that will usually appear as we saw in these last two cases. There'll be pronaceous internal debris and septations within the cyst there might be thick irregular walls, increased blood flow, and surrounding inflammatory change like the increased echogenicity of the pericyst fat. One thing to be wary of, solid components may indicate ectopic thyroid or rarely less than 1% of cases thyroid cancer. And when there is cancer, it tends to be the papillary subtype, but that's quite uncommon. Nevertheless, if you see a solid area that has vascular flow and doesn't appear to represent simple debris, you should consider that possibility. Therapy typically involves resection of the cyst along with the surrounding tissue along the thyroglossal tract to prevent recurrence. And the midline portion of the hyoid bone is often resected as well. That's known as the cyst drunk procedure. All right, that's it. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope you found this educational. And thank you again to our sponsor, Samsung Ultrasound. If you like this lecture, please subscribe to the video podcast or on YouTube. To see bonus teaching material posted throughout the week, click the YouTube community tab or follow us on social media. Until next time, Radiology is life.